She is called the Wonder Woman of real estate. Don't mess with her because she might lasso you and get you to tell the truth. Oh, yeah. She is a registered agent in California and in Florida. And as of today, if you check out her YouTube channel, she's got 91,600 plus subscribers on her YouTube channel. So guess what? That means when she talks, people listen. I'd love to welcome to the stage and bring up my new friend, Loida Velasquez. Loida, what's up? Welcome to the show. What is going on? Wow, that was an awesome introduction. I really appreciate everything that you just mentioned. Um, I'm really excited about you know today's episode, talking about AI, our energy. Yeah. I mean, we have so many people that are already tuning in, dropping comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. I know that there's people watching us pretty much in every single platform. Yep. Even platforms that are still like probably coming up and being creative, we're probably there as well. So yeah, let's get this going, Robert. Yeah, let's get this going. So L Lloyd has already asked you all, where are you tuning in from? I see, wow, 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 Mimosas is 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 uh, sharing drum roll, please. Where are you coming in from? Gary Jones, hey, how you doing, my friend? No other place I'd rather be. Bounce Ball Boogie from Denver, Colorado. I like it. All right, we've got Texas Twister Drink. We got some interesting names today. <laughs> I, I know, <laughs> from, I love it. <laughs> from uh, Southern Arizona. We've got living in Los Angeles, Long, Los Angeles. Uh, I'm trying to get my Spanish accent on Los Angeles. All right, San Fernando Valley. All right, good. Renee Wright from South Africa. Woo. Okay, y'all gonna make me get my real estate license up in here. Yes, I like it. Las Vegas, Deshaun Damon, like it. L.A. Vida me, what was, what was that? Vida me, okay, some, something like that. I'm getting it right. I'm getting my tongue twisted. All right. Trinity Strategic, Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, Virginia Beach, Virginia, South Carolina, Shreveport, Louisiana, New Jersey. All right. Linston Briefing from Paris, France. We got the overseas people going today. Everywhere. Phoenix City, Arizona, Nigeria. Emmanuel Okoy Fawale is from, uh, or is it Fawale? One of those. Let me, let me know. Give me the phonetic pronunciation in the chat. All right. Uh, United Kingdom. Philippines, OMG. Yes, we are international and worldwide today. We have a whole lot of people that are joining us. I like it. I like it. I like it. So, all right. So I've given people the, the, the abbreviated run of show or the abbreviated bio of Ms. Loida Velasquez. Who are you? Tell us, give us a little bit of an introduction to who you are. Yes, so I am originally from Los Angeles, California, born and raised. As of two years, I am now in South Florida. So I'm a Florida girl. I'm out here. I'm licensed in both states. But pretty much my real estate career started back in 2015. Prior to that, I worked in marketing and advertising for about eight years. And I absolutely wow. loved what I did. But it got to the point that I felt like I was being overworked and underpaid. Um, I was also traveling a lot. I was never home. So I saw the real estate space becoming an agent as an opportunity for me to to explore doing something that, you know, had no limits. I knew it was not going to be easy or glamorous, but I knew yeah. that there were people that had been very successful doing um, real estate. So I figured, you know what, I have nothing to lose. Let's just do that. So 2015 got my license. I went after the expireds and the for sale by owners. So doing the cold calls, doing the door knocking. I knew that I wanted to go after listings and working with sellers. And I also knew that a lot of agents talked bad about, you know, calling and knocking. So I said, you know what? It sounds like a lot of agents don't want to do this. So I'm just going to get so good at this that I'm going to set the appointments, get the listings and get that business. And that's kind of it. pretty much how my journey started. Um, I also remember back then being brand new. And I wanted to know what it was like to be an agent. So the first place that I went to was on YouTube. And I wasn't really finding a lot of content uh, showing me what to what the call sounded like or what to say or what to look or anything regarding real estate. So I took that as an opportunity to start creating content and just putting wow. my journey out there. Um, back then, I didn't really have any strategy or a plan. I just said to myself, you know what, let me pick up my iPhone 6. I'm just going to record when I'm learning what's working, what's not working. Um, I told myself I want to post a video every single week. And that's pretty much how I built my YouTube presence. And over time, yeah. that started to grow. I became more knowledge knowledgeable when it came to creating content. I knew that video was the way to go for the future. And I started to see how that was transforming my business, 
my reputation and my credibility, not just with other agents, but also with potential clients that I was working with. Yeah. So I, I want to, we're not going to end up here, but I want to back up to something you just said. A lot of times when people see me online, people are saying, Hey, Robert, what camera are you using? You've got, you know, you've got a mirrorless camera, DSLR, you got something fancy. But Lloyda just said, iPhone 6. We're at like iPhone 15 people. She said, iPhone 6. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So, so tell us, so tell me a little bit about what it was like. Uh, at that point, just kind of picking up your your phone, your your iPhone six to mm -hmm. begin recording content when even when you weren't uncertain of what it was going to do, what did you expect to happen when you started creating content that way? Um, I have always had a mindset of wanting to help people. So for me, mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I'm going to record what's working for me and what's not working for me. And if it helps at least one agent out there implement or avoid doing the mistake, then that makes me happy. So yeah. I, you know, I had no experience speaking in front of a camera. I hated public speaking. Growing up in school, I was that type of student that if the teacher wanted a volunteer, um, I would always make sure to, to or implement no or avoid doing the and, mistake. You know, then that makes me happy. Not so, so I, you know, I had those no were just some of the things that um, camera. I, hated I hated public speaking. I did. Growing I'm, up I'm some feedback. in school, I'm not sure I was that type of student. <laughs> That was no. me. That was my fault. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. No worries. No worries. But um, uh, yeah, like I was saying, I had no experience public speaking. I hated being called up um, by teachers or, or anything like that. So it just goes to show that I just had a vision for what I wanted to do. And even though I wasn't an expert on it, um, I didn't, I didn't care. I knew that eventually it was going to lead me to business. It was going to help somebody out there. And once I started getting messages and comments from people saying, hey, you know, because of your videos, I got my very first listing or I got my very first buyer. I say, you know what? OK, this is awesome. I love to help. And then that's kind of how I, I kept things going. I love it. I love it. So you had you started. And as somebody said in the comments, you started with what you had. They mm -hmm. love that your vision was so powerful. And now we're at this space where over the last year or so, AI has become this big thing this this beast this monster this thing that's just taking over the technology world and at the beginning we asked about people's favorite ai tools and we saw a ton of chat gpt'ers in here so let's talk a little bit about content creation so it's not just about picking up your iphone 6 or your 7 or your 10 it's about having something to say that's of value and creating something that your audience says whoa okay let me stop and listen. So can you talk to us? How do you you how do you personally now use AI as you're coming up with content ideas or creating content? Yeah, before I get into that, just like you mentioned, a lot of people brought up ChatGPT. I remember yeah. when ChatGPT came out, um, I like to consider myself like kind of nerdy and techy and all up in wanting to figure out how to do things. But when ChatGPT yeah. came out, I was like, what is this? Like, how do you even use it? what do you mean i got to put in prompts and it tells me what to do so it took yeah. me some time to figure it out but once i did i was like how have we been able to function without something like this you know it just makes mm. our life so much easier so fast forward to now you know there's so many different ai tools out there but for me specifically when it comes to let's say even content creation i know that there's probably a lot of agents that are watching this right now that are like you know what kind of videos should I put out there that people would yeah. want to watch? Um, I like to say, you know, especially if, if you're creating content on YouTube, there's really probably only a few reasons why someone goes on YouTube to watch something. They either want to mm -hmm. get educated, they want to get entertained, or they're trying to figure out how to put a table together and they need to see something visually because they don't want to read instructions. So yeah. if you are feeling a need and answering a specific question, that's kind of where you get started. But now you have tools like ChatGPT where you can ask it prompts like, hey, what are some of the top things that people are searching for in this area regarding this topic? Yeah. And it'll give you a list of different things. And now it just becomes so much easier to come up with content ideas and create content. So at the end of the day, there's really no excuse for you to not be implementing or using AI to your advantage. Yeah, so let's pause right there on the creation for for just a moment. So what people 
there are two places that people get stuck. Sometimes people get stuck by not knowing what content to create. And then others get stuck by the getting behind the camera and what that looks like and not knowing how long a video should be and all of the different things that come with that. So if you are advising someone who is maybe new to the real estate game or new to the small business game and they're starting with AI and they're trying to get online, what is a quick, easy workflow that you might share with them? Where should they get started? Yeah, I would say first, definitely figure out who your audience is. Um, yeah. what are you trying to teach them something? Are you trying to entertain them? Like what it is, figure out who it is, because then from there, it's going to become easier. You trying to understand kind of the way that they think, what they're looking for, what questions they need answers for. And then from there going to a platform, like let's say chat GPT or Bard, which is Google's AI and mm -hmm. asking it, putting in a prompt. And just like I mentioned, you know, a couple minutes ago, um, regarding a topic, what are some of the top things that people are searching? Because at the end of the day, you can create amazing content and have the best camera and equipment in the world. But if no one watches your video, then it doesn't matter. And yeah. you know, what's funny is that going back to my iPhone six, there are some videos that the quality is not the best. It's almost kind of pixelated and they have over a hundred thousand views. And I'm like, I wasn't even putting really any effort on that. I thought that it was not going to be a good video. And here it is like taking off and helping some people. So I think wow. also it comes down to not being so focused on having perfect, you know, equipment and how it all looks, but putting out content that people actually will watch and need information for. So the workflow would be going to something like ChatGPT, getting maybe five or six different video ideas from there, uh, figuring out a day during the week that works with your schedule for when you're going to record this. And again, you don't need any expensive $1,000, $3,000 camera. You can start with your cell phone. Nowadays, you know, all cell phones have even 4K capabilities, which is much better yeah. than the iPhone 6. So you can start there, get yourself a microphone. Um, when I started my YouTube channel, I would always film outside or in front of a window so that I could have good lighting. So, you know, there's only those really small things that you can start to implement and put together. It's almost like a schedule and a routine. And I, yeah. and I like to say also, you have to treat this like a business. If you're a small business owner, if you're an agent or whatever it is, I'm sure that you have a purpose for why you want to create content whether you want to drive more sales or you want more people to know who you are. So also find out what that purpose is and that don't just be creating something to put it out there, but be intentional about what you're doing as well. I love it. So you have a big presence on YouTube. Can I use AI to help me figure out the place that I need to be? So uh, what, I, I'll go back to another reason why some people don't want to get on video. They they go on TikTok or they go on Instagram and they see the reels and they're like people dancing and pointing and they're like, I don't want to do all of that. I'm a low key person. I don't know how to do all of that. Can AI help me determine where I should be showing up? Absolutely. I think also you got to figure out where your audience is as well whether they're on YouTube, on Facebook, or on Instagram, or on TikTok, I can tell you that I'm not out there like dancing and doing all these dance moves. If anything, most of my videos are talking head and people love it, you know? Yeah. So you don't have to do what everyone is doing out there because maybe it's not you. I'm not going to go out there dancing. It's not me, but you know, I'm going to teach you real estate stuff and you're probably going to sit in front of the computer for 10, 20 minutes because everything that I'm saying is relevant to what you want to learn. So again, yeah. it goes back to the value that you're delivering to your audience. Uh, don't think that you have to be jumping in on these trends in order for you to actually get views or be known. Um, I think it also comes down to you being genuine to who you are and showing up authentically. Yeah, awesome. So one of the reasons I asked you about the different platforms is because also people have this thought process that, okay, Yep, I got to create this video for YouTube and then I've got to go create one for Facebook and then I got to go create one for LinkedIn and one for Twitter X and another yeah. one for TikTok, etc. Are you utilizing the strategy of repurposing in your business? And if so, how are you using AI to do that? Yes, absolutely. I think that's something that everyone has to implement, especially if you're creating any type of content. 
especially long form content. So for me, for example, the way that I repurpose a long video is that there's so many different AI tools. So for example, there there's video.ai, which is the one that I use. I'll pretty much drop my YouTube link if I did a live stream or a long video, and it will automatically chop up maybe like 10 to 15 different small clips that I can yep. now repurpose as reels or TikToks or whatever it is that I want to use it for because they're under 60 seconds. So now yeah. that takes the, the power out of me having to manually do it. I have something, an AI doing that for me. Um, it's crazy how the clips that they pick are usually very accurate. If anything, I, I can go in there and clip it, but it, it allows me to be efficient. So for anyone that's watching this, at the end of the day, you want to be efficient and productive with your time. You don't want to spend hours, you know, editing something that there's already a tool out there for, for you to do. So by repurposing that allows you to show up in different platforms, you know, so you're not having to redo content for TikTok, and then now i have to film again for instagram no if anything you take that video put it everywhere else and then now you're showing up nice so can you share with us maybe your your strategy for um leading people down a path to maybe your home base so is is your home base YouTube and then do you use the other videos that are repurposed on the other platforms to lead people back to YouTube or what what is the process that you follow? Yeah, so YouTube is the platform where I do most of my content, the mm. one that I focus on. Um, I have always been intentional of having my Instagram in all of my videos. So people will naturally, once they see that I'm consistently showing up on YouTube, they'll go find me on Instagram. I'm repurposing gotcha. stuff on Instagram as well. So that has allowed me to grow my Instagram following and everything has been organic. I have never paid for ads or followers or likes or anything like that. It's just people see me on, on YouTube. They want more. Well, now when you go on my Instagram, you get Loida, but it's not just education. Now you see like behind the scenes of me working or what I'm doing or me being human working out or with my dogs. And now people get to feel like, oh, okay, well, now I, I know Loida even more. So that has been my approach. Um, I have also done in the past where I go live on Instagram or I collaborate with other um, people on Instagram if we're going to do something on YouTube to, again, send people back to the YouTube channel. And the reason that I like to focus on YouTube is because um, I am a part of the partner program. So as I grow my YouTube channel, it has become another stream of income for me. And it has led to agents knowing who I am. They know where I'm licensed. So it has led me to get more referrals and business. And at the yeah. end of the day, whoever's watching this, that's what you want in whatever industry that you're that you're in. Yeah. So let's talk about YouTube again for, for just a moment here. So one of the things that I get emails or inboxes all the time from people saying, hey, I can optimize your content on, on YouTube for more views, et cetera, et cetera. And SEO, back in the day when you had a website, SEO was this huge thing. And of course, SEO is something on YouTube. Are you using AI in any way to help you with that process on YouTube? Optimization, SEO, your video marketing? Yes. So I'll use a tool like ChatGPT. And if I have already uploaded my video onto YouTube, let's say I recorded something, I uploaded, but I haven't published it, maybe it's unlisted. There's different Chrome extensions. So one that I like to use, it's YouTube summary for ChatGPT. So I'll send it to ChatGPT. It'll give it a summary. And from there, I'll ask ChatGPT to give me an optimized description with SEO for YouTube. And I'll also ask for it to give me some titles with SEO. That way, the probability of my video being found is going to be higher because I'm touching on certain keywords and, um, it's going to possibly come up on search. Okay. Do you believe, I saw something the other day where somebody said, um, SEO for websites is dead. <laughs> and they were saying, uh, don't, don't worry about building out a website and looking to get its search engine optimized. Uh, just focus on some of your, your online 
social channels and really worry about those because that's the most that's the place where most people are going to find you anyway they're not going to your website they're going to search your instagram your linkedin etc can you respond to that for me um i don't know much about websites but i do know that yeah. i focus on the platforms that that are like search engines so obviously youtube is owned by google it's a, the second search engine there's over i think 2.8 billion users so yeah. i'm going to focus my energy on that um, a lot of the views that I get end up coming from Google search. So if I can focus on a platform where I can get more eyeballs of people knowing who I am or what I do, then I'm going to focus on that. And from there, they're probably going to go down the rabbit hole, find my website, or I can, you know, add a link on my Instagram to my website. But um, yeah, I, I know someone put, you know, in the comments, multiple streams of income. I think we should always focus, especially if there's opportunities out there to create multiple streams of income. So that that's why I like to focus on that. <laughs> love it. Love it. Listen, everybody, we are here with Lloyda Velasquez. We're having a fantastic conversation on how to market using AI. If you've got conversations or questions that you would like us to incorporate in our discussion right now, make sure that you let you add the letter Q and then the question right after that so i'm just looking at a couple of comments here yep multiple streams of, of income thank you mimosas excellent a couple of people have to get to work oh come on you know go to work late today you can just stay here and watch with us okay all right uh norlisa i can't wait to learn more thank you so much um using chat gpt to write listing descriptions says somebody or writing a newsletter is great but there's so much more to ai some tools can help you automate sops or standard operating processes i like it so we've got a lot of great comments here all right so let's keep on rocking and rolling through this ai marketing journey so as you have been building out your presence as you've been growing youtube part of the marketing spectrum is also the email part of things. How are you using AI within your email marketing to continue to build your, your brand? It goes to, you know, leveraging the ability of ChatGPT being able to give me, for example, uh, different email templates, depending on who mm -hmm. I want to talk to or where in the conversation we are. Um, so again, it's almost like you have an assistant, someone doing the work for you, but it's an AI and it allows yeah. me to be more effective with my time. Obviously, whatever it gives me, I go through it and I tweak it so that it sounds like me. But the fact that I don't have to spend now hours trying to come up with, you know, 10 different emails or whatever it is that I'm trying to do, it just makes it so much easier to be able to do work. Yeah. Yeah. So for the uninitiated or for those who are still fairly new to the AI space, can you give us an example of a prompt that you might use in chat GPT in order to come up with an email sequence or campaign for your 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 audience? Yeah, it could be something along the lines of, hey, chat GPT, can you give me um, five different email, a campaign with five different emails for first time home buyers that are looking in Los Angeles, California within the next six months. Wow. And then you just wait and see what it tells you. <laughs> wow, wow. So with regard to tone or does it sound like you when you're thinking about crafting an email campaign? Are there, what What are you telling chat GPT? Have you trained it to sound like your voice or, you know, how how, how do you do that? Yeah, I tell it to sound friendly, but professional. Um, mm. And it's crazy because all of these things I have learned over time from other people as well. I didn't know if you tell it, oh, you know, say it very firm or aggressive or whatever. Chat GPT knows how to do that. But I think yeah. also over time, it knows your tone and it can deliver all of, you know, the responses to sound like you. And if not, you just keep on telling it certain things and you train it. I mean, it's crazy, the terminology. Let me train my AI so it sounds like me. But yeah, that's that's yeah. what people are doing. Yeah, yeah. And there, there are there are so many different people that are talking about this specific. I think about maybe, you know, her as well, a friend of mine, Marky Lemons, that that her her entire thing is is AI in the real estate industry. And that's essentially all she's talking about these days 
with regard to how to move your a your real estate business forward using AI. So we've talked about using AI for um, email. We've talked about AI for creating and crafting your YouTube summaries and maybe even your keywords. We've talked about AI for repurposing your content. In the marketing process, outside of the things that we've just mentioned, are there other tools or other re other resources that you're using uh, that are AI related? What else are you using AI for that we haven't talked about? Um, even with Big View, you know, one of the things, especially I know in the real estate space or for anyone that wants to create content is that I always hear it. Well, what am I going to say? I don't know what to say. Well, now you can use AI to give you a script. You can upload it to Big View, the teleprompter. You can just read it. And now, again, it goes back to not having an excuse for creating yeah. content. So it just makes it so much easier so that you're not really having to think, well, what am I going to say or how long should it be? You tell it to give you like a 30 second script. You upload it to Big View, whether it's on your phone or, or on your computer. And now you already have everything at your fingertips to be able to create something. And it's all because, you know, AI is helping you. I love it. Uh, just for those that have not ever used Big View's uh, AI, there's an AI tool uh, embedded in Big View to, cre to create scripts that can you can put right into the teleprompter as well. So this is fantastic. All right. So we've got a few questions here. I want to take a moment to answer some questions here. All right. So uh, let's start with the easy one. And I think I know the answer to this, but I'll let you answer it. Uh, hello, Loida and RK3. Are you using chat GPT-3 or 4? And this is from Cara P. Uh, chat GP. You know what? I know that there's so many different ones. I don't even know which one it is. I just know yeah. that right now I'm using, uh, I'm still using the free one. I haven't upgraded ah. to the paid one. So I don't know which Got one it, it is. <laughs> So yeah, so it's three three point five. So if you're on the free one, I think three point five is the highest that you can access. If you're doing the paid one, you can do Chat GPT four and and above. Excellent. All right, cool. Uh, somebody was asking. Renee is asking, what was the repurpose tool that you mentioned? Video dot AI, and I think it's spelled mm -hmm. like V I D Y O dot AI. Mm -hmm. That's correct. All right. Fantastic. Video.ai. I've used video as well. And man, there, there are quite a few of them. Opus Clips oh, yeah. is another one. I mean, there, there are quite a few of them out there that you can use. All right. Let's keep going. Um, somebody said, do you pay for chat GPT? Nope. She answered that question. All right. So Ascension Village is asking, I'm a life coach focusing on helping others with chronic illness build a life of resiliency and overcome obstacles. Any recommendation for a life coach on marketing with AI? You know, even taking that, the first thing that comes to my mind is taking exactly what you just wrote, going on ChatGPT and telling it, can you give me a marketing strategy to gain whatever it is your goal is, gain clients or gain more social media presence. And then you'll be surprised. It'll give you an entire strategy on marketing or social media. Um, so I would start there. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So somebody's asking, <laughs> they're trying to get all up in the back end of your business now. So Mimosas, Mantras and Money is asking, what does your funnel look like? That could be a very long <laughs> answer. I don't even know where to start or, or what to refer it to. But I would yeah. say, you know, also you got to keep it simple. Um, it also depends if you have a team or, or if you're, you know, like a one man show type of thing. Um, but again, even going back to ChatGPT or, or to an AI and asking it for a strategy to be more efficient, yeah. that's a great way, place to start. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to come back to a couple of questions here. I think where I want to go next for people is, as we mentioned at the beginning, you've got a strong YouTube presence, more than 91,000 subscribers on YouTube. And uh, I've even been told that you're like YouTube famous. Right. So <laughs> you've you've gotten to a specific place. You've got a strong social media presence. How has that helped you or what's been the correlation between that and your financial success or your growth in the real estate industry? Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, the great thing about my challenge, my channel and the content that I produce is that, you know, it helps agents, agents pretty much all over the world at this point 
a lot of them are in the US. So it has led to referrals. I get a lot of agent to agent referrals because they know that I'm licensed in California and in Florida. And because they've been watching me and they know how I am and how I work, if they ever have a client that's looking to buy or sell, I'm like the first one that pops up in their head. So agent to agent referrals. Um, also, whenever I do end up setting appointments with clients, whether it's buyers or sellers, um, I don't know about you, but anytime we meet somebody, they're probably going to Google and seeing, okay, who is this person? And I'm popping up. Now they see, okay, this girl, Loida, she's legit. She's actually teaching agents. So she must know what she's doing. So it goes back to credibility and yeah. it almost handles the objections of, well, who are you or why should we go with you? Um, so I use that to my advantage. So for anyone that's still thinking whether or not you should put yourself out on video, because I don't know, you're scared, uh, take that out of your mind, because if you're not doing it, somebody else is doing it and they're getting the paychecks yeah. that should have been yours. Um, I, it. like I said in the beginning, you know, I never had any experience in front of a camera. I was horrible. I remember people would leave me comments saying, oh, Loida, you talk too fast. So you're running out of breath. And I'm like, man, I'm over here giving you some really good tips on how to run an open house. And all you care about is, you know, that I'm talking too fast, but there's going to be those people. And what I did in that case is that I said, you know what, let me watch my content and what I can improve on so that I stop getting those comments. So yeah. that's what I did. I started to improve on my communication and I learned how to smile so that I wouldn't come on across looking serious in my videos. Um, and again, I think that has allowed a lot of people to be able to relate to me because I am human. I'm authentic and genuine in the content that you see. So it allows people, agents to connect with me, uh, potential clients to reach out. I'll get emails saying, hey, Loida, I've been watching your videos. I have this fourplex in Long Beach that I'm looking to sell. I would love for you to sell it. When can we get on a call? So for those of you that maybe you're like, well, I hate cold calling or knocking or lead generating. Well, imagine if you're putting out these videos and now they're generating leads for you and you wake up to an email for a $1.4 million listing. Like maybe wow. hopefully that motivates you to, to start doing things like this. Um, aside from that, you know, it's led to partnerships and sponsorships with other companies. And again, it, it's all because I decided to put my fears to the side and just put myself out there. And throughout yeah. the years, I started to get so much better. And for everyone that's watching this, you can go back to my very first videos from 2015 and you can see my most recent ones and it's like a, a completely different loida but it just goes to show you that if you really stick to something it can lead you to so many opportunities and i tell everyone that sometimes struggles i'm like you know you can create your own opportunities many times you're just getting in your own way yeah yeah so i we've been talking to loida velasquez about AI and how to market with AI, but we've also been talking a bit about YouTube and her journey there. So one of the things that I hear from a lot of, I'll use the word gurus or people who are um, experts in in the area of, of YouTube is, yep, just get online, be consistent, get online, get online, get on video and be consistent, just put it out there. And some people come back and say, yeah, I did that. And I've been doing that and nobody's watching my videos. So is it really just about putting it online and the algorithm or the platform does the rest of the work for you? Or are there additional things that people can do? Are, is, it, is it sharing with your family and friends? Is it emailing it out? What, what are you doing or what were you doing to gain some additional traction for the videos that you were putting online? Yeah, a lot of them I was emailing out for people to see because I knew that I was answering specific questions that they probably were looking for the answers. Um, another thing that I was doing is that I was also taking a look at what other content creators were doing, even in other industries, because maybe I thought, again, maybe I thought I had a genius idea for a video, but no one really cared about that specific topic. So if you were creating content and maybe you're not getting views or, or any traction, I would say, think of the content and not just that, but the topics, what topics are popular within your specific niche that you should probably be focusing on. Um, along with that, again, when it comes to YouTube, having a good thumbnail that people will want to click on. And for me, it's just, sometimes you got to play around with a different type of content. 
Um, I was putting out vlogs. I was putting out me cold calling. I was putting out just educational stuff. And I started to see that me cold calling live was getting a lot of people watching me because they like to see, oh, well, what's Lloyd going to say next? Maybe she's going to get hung up on and yelled at, <laughs> or she's going to set an appointment. So like people love yeah. that stuff. Um, but you never know what people are going to enjoy watching that you're putting out. So sometimes, especially in the beginning, as you're trying to build an audience, play around with a different type of content just to see what people can relate to. And then you can start to double down on, on those type of videos. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, Kentarian Brown, good to see you. Nubia Travels, so glad that you're here. Uh, Gary, Stephanie King Maddenly, so good that you are here. So I saw a question from someone and I wanted to make sure that I got it got it in. Oh, here it, here it goes. Mimosa's Mantras and Money is asking, are you utilizing YouTube shorts? Gary V says that's the place to be. Yes, I am. I am utilizing. Um, so what I'm doing is that depending on the the longer video that i have put out sometimes on the actual app i will cut a little piece of it and upload it to shorts or if not from an ai app like video.ai i will take some of that repurposed content and just schedule it out so what i have tried a lot of different things in the past i'm always testing testing things out sometimes i put out two shorts a day sometimes three Sometimes I'll do one, depending if I have a longer video going out that day. But yes, I definitely utilize that. And again, depending on the topic, I have seen those shorts get me a lot of new subscribers to my channel. Love it. Love it. All right. So let's go back a little bit. So you talked a little bit about starting out in 2015 and using your iPhone 6 and getting on and doing all of these different things to get yourself moving. If you if you were, as you look back now, yes, what you did has worked to get you where you are. But as you look back now, do you have any tips or advice, valuable insights that you'd give your past self about what to do? I would say to have a more clear strategy in the beginning uh, mm -hmm. or as you're starting, because like I said, you know, when I first started out, I was just putting out videos and um, I knew people liked what I was saying and what I was teaching, but I wasn't really sending them anywhere. It was right. organically happening that they were following me on Instagram. But now, knowing what I know now, I would tell someone, you know what, be intentional. Where do you want to send them? Give a call to action. You know, if you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next 60 days, reach me. Here's my number or whatever it is. Because sometimes you have to tell people what to do. Otherwise, they're just going to be like, oh, well, Lloyd, that was a really great real estate video. She showed that house, but she probably doesn't sell or anything or she's not an agent. People don't know. So it's almost like you have to tell them what to do or where to go to next. So that's what what I would be intentional about doing. Yeah. So one of the things that AI is able to do now, we've got Dolly. You've got some of the other channels. Uh, you've got canva that is coming up with ai generated content uh images videos etc are you using anything like that at this point in your strategy not right now i think i'm at a point where i'm still kind of learning some of the stuff just like everyone mm -hmm. or a lot of people that are watching this because there's always yeah. like something new that's coming out i think the only Thing that I have played around with on Canva has been, I think it's called like the magic tool or something where you yep. highlight, let's say you're wearing something and I'd say, okay, give me like a, a pink shirt instead of a black one and it'll change the color. <laughs> so I've yeah. done that. So that works. But yeah, I'm still learning some of the things. Okay. Okay. So with regard to that, I'm going to go to Stephanie's question here. Um, you said you don't really use AI video, but as you create videos, um, how do you do your editing process? Do you use AI in your editing process at all? Or do you just kind of send it off to an editor? What, what, what are you using AI, if anything at all in that part of the process? Uh, yeah, depending on the video, sometimes I just, I do have an editor that will edit it or mm -hmm. sometimes, uh, again, depending on the video that I do, um, I'll upload it and just kind of do some very short edits or there are some ai platforms out there that will edit some of the videos for you there's also different uh resources and again i feel like there's so many where yeah. there's like faceless videos that you can create using ai and you give it a script yeah. and someone's even talking so i mean there's a lot of different things out there yeah 
Yeah, there are, there are so many. I mean, we could go list a whole lot. There's actually a website. I don't know if people know this. There's a website called AIToolsDirectory.com. So as people, as new AI tools come out, as, as software is incorporating AI, that it's listed on this website. And you can go and separate and filter and say, hey, I want stuff AI with relation to video or with relation to text and transcribing, whatever it is. They're just, it's so many, it's so interesting, but it's also overwhelming. Absolutely. <laughs> just so yes. much stuff there. There's so much stuff there. Awesome. All right. So let's talk about the real estate industry just a little bit. In some ways, this may be similar to starting your own small business, but as you advise or as you give information to people who are new in the industry, what are some of the essential steps? What are some of the strategies, the baseline foundational strategies that you would help them, that you would advise them on following so that they can reach success? And this is just if you want to be a real estate agent, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would say figure out what your daily schedule looks like if you're doing this part time or full time um, and what hours you can commit, like 100 percent commit to yeah. this business um, because, you know, it's not fun. It's not glamorous. You're probably going to want to give up. Uh, but you have to be very disciplined with your schedule. So figuring out what your schedule is going to look like, having that set in stone, your prospecting, your lead generation, uh, focusing on the income producing activities. So income producing activities are not creating a marketing flyer. Uh, we got to focus on actually having conversations to figure out who is looking to buy or sell. So having that schedule, working on your skills, so your communication, so to be able to have successful conversations, whether it's on the phone or in person, handling objections. Um, I would also say have a mentor or someone that can guide you so that you're not trying to figure this out on your own. Uh, because yeah. I have a lot of YouTube videos, but it's still not going to teach you everything. And you need to be also held accountable. And also having an understanding of why you got into this or why you want to get into this. What is your long term goal? Because if you don't have those things in place, you're going to easily get discouraged. Uh, there's going to be people that are probably going to doubt you. And what ends up happening is that if you're putting in the work, but you're not seeing results, you think it doesn't work. But in reality, you got to ask yourself, am I really giving it 110% or am I going like 50%? Did you make only two calls or did you make 20 calls? That is what's going to make the difference. And, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel. You can see my content from, you know, 2015 until now. It's just about making sure that you're also surrounding yourself with the right group of people that are teaching you and holding you accountable. And but you yourself have to be accountable and disciplined as well to succeed. I love it. I love it. So we're getting ready to land the plane here and winding this down. And we've asked you about your basic business advice. I want to get one more question in here from Laria Gordon TV. And Laria says, I do daily devotionals shorts bless you, all right, to four-minute videos that I add thumbnails to. Should I make the shorts from the video schedule during the day? And what's your recommendation for a Christian devotional author? Um, I want to make sure I understand that. Are you, are you clear on the question? Yes, I, I'm pretty okay. sure I am clear. Yes. Um, I'll definitely have to look up her channel because I love, love all of that. Uh, when it comes to the four minute videos, I would say if there is an actual piece that would make sense within that four minute video, then you can do that. Um, for me, some of the stuff that I repurpose as shorts, I end up clipping myself or I end up just like shooting it separately just because I want to make sure that people are getting the right idea or it's like a complete thought and it's not just being cut up. So I think you probably just have to play around with that. But if there are certain sections that make sense, then um, yeah, you can totally try that. Fantastic, fantastic.